So I'm in the Tricentenary Grenache Vineyard in the Barossa Valley with Brian Walsh from Yolumba, and uh, we're going to discuss the old vine Grenache in Barossa. So what is it about uh, Grenache that's sort of a little bit puzzling to people? It's not like anyone just sort of walks in and says, I'll have a bottle of Grenache, uh, yet these vines have been in the ground for well over 100 years, and you've got all this history and heritage, but nobody, no one seems to sort of know it as well as they probably should. Good question, Mark. Um, Grenache is, in my view, one of the great, great varieties of, of this region uh, and the world, but it has been a bit of an underdog for a long time. It's sort of been um, one of those varieties which has been a bit of a workhorse, a bit of a rollick the sleeves type of, <laughs> type of wine, right. with not quite the um, accolades of the, of the classics, the Pinots and the Cabernets and the Chardonnays of the world. But it's now shown, after growing in this region for over 120 years, that it's got the goods to deliver. Tricentenary is a bit of a cheeky name, don't you think? Well, the vines are not 300 years old, but um, Tricentenary refers to the fact that these vines were planted in the 19th century and are still bearing fruit and making great wine in the 21st century. So that's our uh, little take. But we think it's still pretty special in the new world to have uh, vines of such age oh, still creating great grapes. That's fantastic. Mm. So I love the um, I love the perfume of the variety. It's uh, it's spice and aromatics um, on the nose in particular. The palate I always think savoury. I think um, I want something to eat after I've had a glass of Grenache. It's a really great uh, wine for anything with a bit of grill or a bit of char. We can taste a grape now if you yeah, like. Yeah, sure, great idea. Let's have a look at some of these. So these are still maybe a week or two away from uh, from harvest, but um, not a Grenache is typically a large grape, but they're not terribly large. Um, so we'd expect a high concentration of flavour and uh, texture and some lovely tannins in that wine as well. Is a small berry size a function of old vines? Or just the vintage or? A bit of both. Yeah. These vines um, are, are almost self-limiting. They've been here so long, we don't do too much work. They look after themselves pretty well, and it, as does the winemaking to some extent. And what do you mean by that, that winemaking takes care of itself? It's not a... Well, we don't... don't there's no oak used. Um, it's a fairly traditional fermentation, um, and we don't add any yeast. We just use a very non-interventionist process and allow the sort of terroir to infl the influence that has on the grape development and the flavour to do all the work. So it's pretty much hands-off winemaking. We feel really, really bad taking a salary for it, really. <laughs> I'll mention that to your <laughs> boss, but... OK, speaking of terroir, we've discussed it a lot um, in the past. What is... I mean, I can see a lot of sand here. The thing about this vineyard is that the roots go down a long way. They've been here a long time. Right. They're not going to get much nutrient out of the top sandy level, but they get their roots down maybe 15, 20 feet, and they're picking up obviously mineral characters out of the, um, um, out of the lower soil profiles. Oh, okay. When you're thinking about uh, Grenache and food, what sort of things are you thinking? Because it's a fairly rich wine, or how would you describe the body of most Grenache? Well, it's, yeah, it's at once, it is at once um, rich, but also with a fragrance about it. It's not, it's not a heavy wine, you know, it's not those sort of wines that are all sort of uh, gutsy with rich extract and tannin. They have a, mo a more fragrant aromatic, uh, aromatic character to them. So I think they go with a whole array of um, food styles. I particularly like them with a grill. You know, whether that's grilled chicken or grilled lamb or, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. But I think they really go well with that sort of freshly um, char-grilled uh, meat. That said, they can also go with a more rustic food style, which could be, say, some sort of you know, local stew and so on. In fact, I think Grenache is really a rustic wine style compared to maybe the more prestigious styles that we might see from other grape varieties, the so-called noble grape varieties. <laughs> One of our locals here calls it the hot area Pinot, and I think ah, it is okay. a bit like that. We need a hot climate to grow good Grenache, we need a cold, a cold climate to make good Pinot. So it's a really, it's a reverse equation, but by the same token, we would think, um, without being disparaging to others, that Grenache is generally reliable wine to, to purchase, even though there's sometimes a little bit of reluctance for people to take that first step and buy it. Uh, we think that um, it's a fairly risk-free uh, purchasing decision because the wines are so consistently good if they're coming from vines that have been around for 120 or 100 or even 50 or 60 years. Yeah, it's fantastic to have this heritage and it's nice to know that you really don't do much with them, I guess. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so they yeah. just take care of themselves. Yeah, nature seems to look after these wines pretty well.